Welcome to Firefly Studios. My name is Katia, and today we're going to continue with our Unity Fundamentals, this time starting to talk about movement. There are many different types of movement in Unity. Today we will be covering the add force method of, of movement. The other ones include directly translating an object using one's velocity, and then there's some subcategories using something called a character controller, move position call. Um, for our cases today, we'll just be focusing on the add force method of movement. So let's jump straight into it. Um, I have a player set up with a rigid body attached to it, since I wish to use physics to move him. And I've got my script. I've got a bunch of animation stuff, but uh, we can touch on that, but we're not going to really go into that that much. So, our script. So, every movement script is going to require some information. Uh, it's always going to require a movement speed and it's always going to require a float that takes in our button presses um, so we can determine which way we want to move. Um, you can also include things like a maximum speed if you want to cap their speed at a certain amount or things like a minimum speed or what have you. In this case, I've got a movement speed, a maximum speed, and then move horizontal. The movement speed and maximum speed are set by the player, whereas the horizontal movement is not set by the player. All of these are private floats. Um, you will also have, if you're using anything that is physics-based, a rigid body. So I've got a rigid body that I'm just caching. All that means is I'm getting a reference to it right here in the start, so I don't have to look it up every time I want to do something with it. It's an efficiency thing. Then here I just initialize my jump strength and movement speed to 600 in case I don't set it to something in the inspector. And then we start off with our update. So this function, it has to deal with jumping. So we're going to skip past that. We're going to focus on this right here. It says move horizontal equals input dot get access horizontal. Input means we're looking for a player to press a button. Get access horizontal. What does this mean? Well, in order to understand this, we're going to have to go back to Unity. We're going to go up to edit and go down to project settings and then we're going to go to our input manager and these axes so these are built into unity and this is how you tie buttons to a language that unity can understand by default your left and right arrow keys and a and d on the keyboard is your horizontal axis so that means notice how some of these are negative buttons and some of these are positive for instance left is negative right is positive but this means that if i press the a key or the left key on the keyboard we will get a value of negative one if i press the d key or the right arrow we'll get a value of positive one on a joystick we would get a range because the joystick isn't just on or off you can like gently push the uh stick in one direction so it might return like uh, 1.5 or 1.2 or something like that if you're pressing no buttons at all it will return a zero so we can use this, basically ask, is our number negative or not? Or another way of saying this, is our number greater than zero or less than zero to determine if we are moving to the right or to the left, which is how we're going to use that. But this is why we use the word horizontal. Please note that it needs to be match the case and spelling. So capital H, horizontal. Vertical is the same thing, but for W and S, or up and down on the keyboard. So here, this move horizontal value is going to equal negative 1, 0, or positive 1. Then here, I'm just setting our speed. This isn't our movement speed. This is used for animation purposes. So we can skip past that. Right here, this is saying um, if our movement horizontal, or our speed, since they're equal to the same thing, is equal to 0. So if we're not moving at all, we want our rigid body's velocity to be equal to zero in the X and Y. So if we release the button, it stops us. The reason why we're doing this is we're using physics. So there's friction and force applied. So we'll continue moving in a direction unless we have this line of code in. And then in the Y axis, we're moving however we're normally moving. All right, then we go to our movement vector. So we need to calculate where we want to move towards. And this is just equal to our movement horizontal. It's very straightforward. Then over here, 
we take our rigid body and we add force to it. The way this works is if you're, imagine you have like a soccer ball or something and you tap it with your foot and it stop, starts rolling in direction. That's what add force does. So we give it a direction, which is our movement. And then we give it a move speed, which for us is defaulted to 600, but it's whatever you want to enter it in. And then you always want to multiply it by time dot delta time or time dot fixed delta time. The reason why we have fixed delta time right here is this is all inside of the fixed update because whenever you're using physics to do something, you want to do it within the fixed update as opposed to regular update. The reason for this is there can be a desync between your regular update and a fixed update as fixed update happens on a fixed interval, hence the name fixed, whereas an update might not happen on a fixed interval. So it can lead to the player pressing the button and there being a delay before they're moving if it's inside of the update function. So you generally the rule of thumb is you always get input and update and always move on the fixed update. Then right here, what we do is this is what or our max speed comes in. So this says if our current velocity or how fast we're moving in a direction on the X axis. So if we're currently moving greater than our maximum speed left or right, we want to set our velocity to our maximum speed. So that way we don't go past our maximum speed. And then we've just got some jump code here. It also works the same way, except this time, instead of making a vector that we want to move in, we just give it vector 2 dot up because we always want to jump up. All right, that is basic movement in a nutshell. The way we, or let's see it work first and then we'll plug it into the animation. So currently, if I press play and we move, we're moving. And then I let go, we'll stop moving. Same thing over here. I let go, we'll stop moving. We can jump and all that. The way we tie animation to this is using this variable. So I have a separate script, an animation script, that based on our speed value or movement horizontal value, it determines if we're moving or not. So right here, it's saying we're setting a float in our animator equal to whatever the absolute value. So if we're moving negatively, it'll just get rid of the negative sign. Um, so it'll always return a value between zero and one. And the way our animation is set up, if you look at our player, is in order to switch from our idles to our walk state, is looking for speed that's greater than zero. And we go back when the speed is less than 0.1%. So that's how it gets plugged in here. And here I just have a reference to the player to get access to our speed. Then determining on if our speed is greater than zero or less than zero, in other words, is our speed a negative number or a positive number, we'll flip the player so that we're facing the right direction. And all that happens in the flip function is we just rotate on the Y axis 180 degrees. I hope you found this video interesting. Um, I will go into other types of movement in future videos. Uh, have a good rest of your day and I will see you in the next one. Please hit the like and subscribe button.